Welcome and thank you for darn near, near filling the room for this uh, MPC Guest Author Series event featuring Christopher Morton. And I was like, and when you hear the same thing from two or three readers, you gotta look at it. It can't be just, you know, them. Uh, and, and so I, I backed that off, except in a couple instances. Um, blessed are the dumb fucks. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and there was, there's, a, there's a scene in it where, where Josh and Biff are leaving a scene of having, <coughs> Josh having healed all these children. And, and, uh, and he says, and Biff says something like, well, you know, why did you do that? And he goes, I, I love them. And he goes, you really do. You really do love them. And he says, I do. All of the little children, I love them. Red and yellow, black and green. <laughs> and, and Biff says, really? Green? And he goes, no, nah, I'm just fucking with you. Um, <laughs> So those are the only two instances where Jesus says the F word. Where was I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The one, the other letter was from a retired Monsignor in uh, Montreal, and he didn't like the book because it didn't adhere to Catholic theology. <laughs> First, I don't know what a retired Monsignor does. <laughs> Not pray. You know, stay away from children. Uh, so, anyway, I haven't had that backlash. And now they're teaching, they teach it at Harvard Divinity. I couldn't get into Harvard in a ninja suit. Uh, you know, but they're teaching my book at Harvard, you know, so. You know, and they're teaching it at, um, I had, I was at, at an event in Milwaukee. And it was, it was a bunch of people, it was about this many people, and they were all lined up, kind of serpentine through the store to get their books signed, which we'll do later if you brought books. And, um, and I saw these guys, and there was one like in purple robes, and there was another one in like bright red vestments, and there was another one in some other flavor. And I was, and, I mean, they were fancy, and, and I was, you notice that, you know, because all my people are, despite what year it is, they're, look at them, you know. <laughs> It's like 1992 in here, let's face it. <laughs> we're, we're like, when Kurt Cobain died, we went, that's it, I'm not changing clothes. Um, <laughs> it will be grunge forever, I, and I love you for that. Um, so, so anyway, uh, what was I lying about? <laughs> yeah, so they came up, and they were from three different seminaries. And they were all teaching lamb to their to their seminary students, you know, because I really thought this was it, what this is going to be a thing, and it was. They were there, thanked me for writing lamb and tell me how much they liked it and how they were teaching it in their comparative theology classes. And I'm like, okay. so uh, huh? I don't know. I, well, I think it was the I think it's the fact that it covers Buddhism and Taoism and. And, um, and Taoist alchemy, which is like where feng shui and shui and all that comes from, and Hinduism, and uh, it's there's a lot of there's a lot of you know really smart layers in Lamb that you just don't. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Just the dumb fucks is funny. Um, <laughs> That was it. That was probably it. Yeah. If, if they're ever teaching in a Hebrew school, that'll be what it is. It's like, well, you know what? This bacon thing sounds pretty good. <laughs> Jesus was a Jew. Um, so uh, I finished that book, and, and I still had another book on a contract, and I was having lunch, as you do when you're an author and you're between books. I was having lunch with a friend of mine who kayaks a lot, ocean kayaks a lot, and you guys being in the Monterey area will, will understand this. And, he had talked about going to an island in, um, I think it's in the, the Tongan archipelago, called um, Rarutu, um, which is the Scooby Island. Uh, <laughs> and, <it's, laughs> I know. Uh, 
that's really what it's called, free room two. And, <laughs> I, you may not have, I don't know if you have to say that. You know? But that is true. I mean, for years, when, after I went to Yap, for I was seeking love then, I went, I would say, well, that, where they invented small dogs, Yap. And people would go, really? <laughs> but this really is, but in Rarutu, they, um, they will let you swim with whales because it's French. And you know, in American waters, you have to have a research permit um, that's, that's given out by NOAA and, and the <laughs> science nerds. Um, it says that you can get within, I think it's closer than 100 yards to marine mammals. But in, the French can give a fuck. You know, they're, they're like, what sauce would be good with that? Um, <laughs> so he was talking about being in the water with singing humpback whales. And I thought, well, that sounds cool. I'm going to write a book about that so I can do that. Because that's the thing, right now I've got a stack of books, right? So it's like, oh, you got your legitimate. You're not just a, you know, a dude going, I'd like to write a book someday. And they're like, mm -hmm. you know, so, so he had a friend that was um, named Randy Wells, who worked at the Marine Mammal Institute, somewhere near, somewhere in the Keys, I think. And so I sent him a pile of my books, and I go, Randy, I, I heard that you do great work, and I'm interested in doing a book on humpback whales. And you know, here's my books. What do you think? And he wrote, uh, Thanks for the books. All my work is on dolphins. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but he wrote it, but there is a guy named Jim Darling who knows more about humpback whales than anybody else in the world. And maybe he could help you out. So I got a pile of books and I sent him and I said, Dear Jim Darling, I want to write a book about humpback whales. Um, here's all my books, what do you think? And he was like, okay. Uh, I mean, more scientific, but... Uh, Excuse me, I'm allergic to, I'm allergic to public speaking. Um, so we went, I was on double secret probation and I went to Hawaii. My choices of doing research on humpback whales was Hawaii or Alaska. <laughs> so anyway, I did that book and I wrote, the best thing, it was cool though, because I started, I hung out with marine mammal biologists. So I'll just, I'll just kind of give you the story that stood out for me as the what's cool about research thing, is a woman who worked at the, uh, uh, Oregon State Marine Mammal thing at Newport. She sent me a note, she says, Bruce May, Bruce May is the guy in marine mammal science who is like the Captain Nemo. He's the guy, if there's gonna be a weird device that you can snap onto a seal and send him to 3,000 feet and you know, light him up or, you know, Bruce, in, he figured out how to build it and get it on there. And so she sends me this story about how Bruce is in the Bering Sea, which is big water, you guys, big water. And he's in like a 12-foot zodiac, and they're trying to put tracking tags on right whales. Right whales are huge, huge whales. They're like one humpback whale is that four, it takes four humpback whales to make a right whale. And then you have to have the right kind of adhesive. Um, <laughs> but, but they have the largest testes in the world. Yeah, yeah, I know. I don't, I don't remember how big, but it's like huge. And they, and they have prehensile penises. So the way that they, they mate is by a washout sort of strategy. It's like, it's okay if you shagger. If I shagger last, I'll wash all, out all your guys because I have ginormous testes. <laughs> and so Bruce was trying to tag a female uh, right whale. And the only way you can tell whether they're male or female is when they're mating because they're in such big water. They're not like in the water in Hawaii where they just send the guy diving down under and go, oh, yeah, that's a female. Um, so the way the female, what the female does is she sort of lies on her back with her junk in the air and the males sort of crowd together and then they have these big 12 foot long prehensile penises that sort of come up and come down, <laughs> up and come down. And so Bruce and his team, are, they have a radio tag on a stick. <laughs> and they're, they've got this zodiac, and they're trying to catch this female uh, right whale to tag her, to stick this thing on her with a suction cup. And the two males are trying to mate with her, and the zodiac, she pulls up under the zodiac. <laughs> the world's largest diaphragm all of a sudden. <laughs> and 
and the, and the males go, oh, she stopped. <laughs> and these two giant whale penises come up out of the water and just beat the hell out of these two scientists. You got more brain power in this zodiac than you do in all of the other marine men in the world. And they're just getting the snot beat out of them by giant whale willies. And I'm like, that's got to go on. Uh, so, except in, the, except in the book, I haven't been like two female whale m researchers, and then they just go, I'm done with penises. <laughs> They're like, no, I'm on the all girls team now. Uh, which I thought was appropriate. Um, so, but that was a real thing, and, and so I, I wrote that book, and, and nobody liked it, really. Um, oh. <laughs> it's okay, I got to get in the water with humpback whales, and, and, and that was cool. Um, I'm just checking time. Uh, uh, so if you have to pee, go ahead, because I'm probably not going to say anything interesting. Um, so I wrote that, and, and then I wrote... Um, I'd always wanted to do a sequel to the vampire book. I know I didn't want to write the vampire book in the first place, but I really sort of left it open for a sequel. And I changed publishers by this time. And, and by, by, you know, Fluke made the Today Show um, book club. And, and so it was, you know, and it was like the CBS, Janet Maslin on CBS Good Morning talked about Fluke. So now they would kind of do what I asked them to do. So I was like, I want to write a sequel to Bloodsucking Fiends that I wrote 12 years ago. And they're like, okay. So I wrote another vampire book. And that's the same story. I just wrote it 12 years later. And I, I actually, um, I met with a book group at Borderlands Bookstore in the Mission, who is a science fiction bookstore. And they were reading Bloodsucking Fiends as their selection of them. And I go, look, you guys, I'm going to do a sequel. You know, but the problem is the city the place where used to be like Pakistani restaurants and transmission shops is now the internet. You know, the Soma was, seriously, when I wrote the first book, there was nothing there. And now all of a sudden it was, you know, Google and all that stuff. And actually Google's not there, but all those, those internet companies. And I said, what should I do? The whole city's changed. They go, oh, just ignore it. <laughs> so I did. Um, and they said, and, and write something that's not on the 41 bus route, because, you know, there's more. I was like, okay, well, that's fair. So I wrote that book. I, I spoke at Google um, in Seattle, actually. And, um, you know, I didn't talk about not knowing. I mean, what am I going to say to them? You know, anything I said, they're going like, I knew that. Um, I just, I just, I just you go, I go, you know what, you guys? I am never feeling lucky. Ever. <laughs> you can just take that button away. <laughs> they don't have any sense of humor about that either. But they do have, it is, has anybody, does any of you guys work at Google? No? Let's talk about that. Um, so Google, they have all that stuff, like, you know those really expensive massage chairs? Not the ones that just vibrate and you're like, Ugh, and your fillers come out, but the ones that are like, the ninja inside poking at you. Um, they have those in the hallway outside of the offices. So even, and then they have an on-staff massage person. And you bring your dog to work, and everything's sort of in primary colors, like like it's Lego land or something. And, and then and the, the, you know, the cafeteria is like gourmet burger bar made to order in carving guy and I mean it's all that stuff that you've heard is really there what they don't tell you is it's a really awful place to work and all of that stuff is just to make people go hey this sucks <laughs> working like 20 hour days and the reason they have all this stuff is so I don't go home <laughs> but I would you know at the time I was thinking well yeah I'm here I would be just twittering my ass off I was like I'm here at Google working with my dog, <laughs> eating a $4,000 hamburger. <laughs> yeah, I'm having a massage here at my desk at Google. 